Well, everyone, the day has finally come that I have finally bought a steam engine. Not the engine that you're probably expecting for this channel, since it's about trains, but frankly, I'm so... <laughs> Uh, I love, love Steam so much that I could not resist this find at a local antique mall of all places. So, I'm just gonna fire this thing up and I'll talk more about this beautiful Velesco D21. Like the video, comment below, subscribe, and well, you know what to do. I also have memberships, so consider that for a dollar a month. And thank you to Dan and Diana for already being uh, members of this channel. This is a Valesco D21 steam locomotive. And by the way, if you hear something in the background right now, that is the air conditioner for this place. So we got everything we need. The water is in the boiler. We're about to put some fuel tablets in. These are just like emergency camp stove fuel tablets I used, recommended by a friend, and these do work quite well for this engine. Here's all your valves, or the piston setup. So, a few interesting things about this it has a blowdown valve, which you shall see when we're putting this engine away. This is the regulator. Not the regu regulator, steam valve for the piston. This is for your steam oil. Little toy governor that doesn't really act as an actual governor. And even a water pump that puts water into the boiler. So I'm not sure which one is these. I have to look at the bottom of it. But one of them for, is for the water input and the other one is for the steam to, to go to the cylinder. The exhaust for the cylinder it actually goes through the stack into this little tube here and up the smokestack in the chimney. And this is just a little catch for any water or steam oil water. So I'll have to empty that out on occasion when operating this thing. But it's a fun little thing. So let's uh, light a fire and put some oil in this thing. There it is. I only put in one fuel tablet to get the water hot or boiling. Then I put another one in to continue operating the locomotive. It's not a locomotive, it's a stationary engine. What am I saying? Takes a moment to light that. Uh, come on here. There it is. Put that under the boiler. This is a very basic, more like a water kettle boiler, not a fire tube boiler. Not sure what the exact name of this design is though. Now let's oil up the motion and the cylinder. Now for the oil. Got this little can right here for oil, just the right size. Got this at an antique store as well. Leaks a little bit, but it's good enough for this purpose. This is steam oil, but it's the only thing I have, so I'm gonna have to use it for bearing oil too, but I'm gonna get some proper oil for this at another date. You gotta fill this thing up with steam oil. That up. And there's little holes here for you to actually put oil in for where pretty much metal rotates and contacts with metal. Got the eccentric and the mounts for the flywheel. Even put a little bit of oil in the water pump here since it does rub against it. Not the best design for a water pump, but it's frankly just a little toy engine and a water pump is a great improvement over many other Velesco engines. And starting the 
boil the water right now. The fire is under there. Got all the valves closed. Whistle. Nice little safety valve. Here's the whistle. Yeah, I'll show that in a minute. And make sure everything's nice and greased. Now we just wait for the water to boil and start creating some steam. So this engine has all of your appropriate features. Come on. Little pressure gauge rated in bar. And one bar is about 14 PSI. So this goes up to two and a half on the extreme end and the safety does pop at about one and a half to two bar up here. So this is a safety valve. Here's your little whistle. And then you got your one steam tube and one's for the water tube. Fire's still boiling, but it's still gonna be a few more minutes before this thing can start running. Stay tuned. And just one other quick note. I do use distilled water from the store to fire this engine. The water around here is way too uh, mineral rich to be of any good use, frankly. You can even just taste it in the water, it's terrible. And anyone from Phoenix can corroborate that information, just saying. We're at about three quarter of a bar. I I'm gonna wait until it gets up to at least one bar or starts free steaming when there's enough water boiling to replace the steam that's being used. We're about done with the first fuel tablet. Gonna put in another one. And we're building up pressure about one and a half bar right now. So soon enough I'll have to put in another fuel tablet and then we'll see what this thing can do. I'd like to try to use the flame from the previous tablet to catch the next one on fire. So... Let's try to get this one caught. Success! Once you see the blue flame, that means it's burning hot and at a good temperature too. So let's take a look at the boiler right now and the pressure. Almost there. It's slowly building. Now we're at one and a half bar and let's give this a go. Oh, even the safety's popping off a little bit. What do you know? Since everything's still fairly cold, a lot of the water will condense. And at first, we'll get a lot of water out of this little catch pan that's over by the smokestack here. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But let's try to warm this up. Need to be patient with it. Only need a little bit of throttle, I guess you could call it throttle, or the, the valve. It's a slip eccentric, so whichever way you push it, it will move in that direction. I think that's good for warming it up. Now I have to empty out the catch pan. And even the uh, safety is still leaking water. The safety valve is dripping water, which is a good thing. That means it's working as intended. Here's the whistle, a little bit for you. And let's take care of this catch pan over here. 
Yeah, I could still run it a little bit more, but you need to just dump that water out and dispose of it. You have to find that sweet spot. That's what happens when you open this bottle too much. I was only demonstrating, I did not make a mistake. Okay, I did make a mistake, but I still demonstrated. Let's try to make this wheel look stationary on camera. It's always fun to play with frame rates on the film. Pretty much all it does just runs itself. Make sure you're watching the pressure gauge and the fire to see that you have enough fuel. And enough water. Water, most important on the steam engine. And every now and then you want to fill up the steam, the cylinder lubricator as well as lubricate all the points on the motion and the valve gear. Already put in the last fuel tablet, so let's give this a go. I only used three for this run. Don't want to make the video overly long if it hasn't been already. Yeah, okay. Yo, I don't need a lot considering the 28 or so PSI in the boiler right now. Quiet, running beautifully. Safety valve finally dried up. That means it's all good and hot. You do dump the catch. That's good for a little more. I do not have a belt for the governor, so it's one of a few things I need to get from Velasco. I would like to get some little accessory that I could actually power and run off of this engine at some point. Last little bit here is about to burn out, so we're going to see what it's like to blow the engine down. Enjoy this last little bit from this video of the piston in motion. Still want to keep the high pressure so I could actually empty out the whole boiler. Now that we're done running, let's see what it looks like when you blow down a D21 locomotive or engine. Dang it! Safety first. However, my shoes are not really cold. Now that we've emptied the boiler, mostly, 
you have to remove a few fittings here. So, make sure the steam's all the way out. Let's see here. Undo the safety valve, which is more likely than hot here. Safety valve and the pressure gauge are pretty much together. Yeah, that is hot. Then you gotta remove the whistle, which takes two hands to do. Make sure your boiler's open so it actually dries out properly. Leave some of these valves open too. For this, mainly just, just get the water out of the system. Empty out your catch, which I already did. Then you need to dump the water out of here. If the, because not all the water gets taken up by the hand pump. Now that we're done with this engine, I took the whistle off. The whistle is a little bit delicate. If you're not careful, you can pop the spring off of the whistle mechanism because it's only like a little needle valve. Looks like a needle to me at least. That holds the pressure in and the little metal spring on a, this little thing. The top comes off pretty easily, so be careful. It's not too hard to put back on, but it's just really annoying to have to keep dealing with. But this is a lovely running engine. I Again, I'm probably going to get some more accessories with this and actually run a workshop in it's a tiny scale, of course. So, hope you did enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. This is Nate's Vintage Trains. I'm Nate, obviously. And until next time, keep it old school. Jesus loves you, and God bless you all.